time and keeping to come. Um, I'm pleased to see you here. So, um, what are the goals for for today? And I hope you don't mind. If you'll be you will be at the beginning, you can smile to the camera, and then I will focus on the <laughs> uh, focus on the on the on the screen. So we are at the transition. We are finishing completing the transition from the oh, uh, from this way in philosophical background getting through uh, most adverse uh, counterintuitive things and you'll go to applications which will much less confusion but uh, they will be a little exhausting mathematically uh, so just getting ready enjoying sunny days before <laughs> it, it, it will be heavy um, so right now in the labs we are weighing or reviewing mathematical foundations and how to implement them with, with the MATLAB. Um, to my understanding you are aware of most of the things I'm, I'm reviewing here and we're just getting a little bit hands-on experience on, on doing it with, uh, with MATLAB and everything you're doing here will be of practical importance will be applied to to what we do uh while i'm mumbling this uh not very important things you can connect to matlab uh, either on your personal computer so log into remote things same way as, as you did last time so um the getting matlab as an instrument to do physical chemistry has um three sections first one is uh, functions differential operators like spirals derivatives and uh, integrals that you did last time uh, second chapter is uh, matrices they're like adding diagonalizing multiplying by, by vector which will be for today and uh, some minimalistic level of programming or just reading and using scripts which will be next Wednesday. So, and after you get the skills, we can, on one hand, apply them to solve some uh, problems related to physical chemistry in class or in homework or here in the lab. And at the, at the same uh, time, we probably will schedule uh, another set of presentations because um, even if I want to give everyone highest grade and finish the class right now probably i'm not allowed to do it i, I need some justification that you performed really well so to, and uh, i think presentations are really great way to uh, create safety cushion for for the grades no matter how you will solve or not solve problems in the future so um we'll do presentations this friday on uh, this philosophical foundations or how to say postulates and in like a couple of weeks we'll do a week or two we'll decide on, on the on the date in, in class we'll discuss it on monday we'll make another series of presentations when uh all class attendees will review this uh basics of matlab so that uh everyone will be comfortable doing things and if i was mumbling something in not recognizable way or if uh, when you try some skills and they do not work, finally, there will be a third chance of watching one of the classmates and uh, get it independent opinion. So here is a plan. Um, the understanding of the course, even if uh, some pieces of the story induce irritation if you think that something is not quite logical or you do not see complete picture it is normal and uh, i even do not accept it as a uh, weakness of the instructor it's uh, whoever teaches this course it's always happens this, this way so the understanding of the course will appear as a mosaic so it's not possible to build everything at once so we need to draw one line here another line there and soon it will uh, come to a complete picture so uh, from this point of view uh, 
uh, I'm going to give some heads up. Today in the class you saw, what? What did you saw? Two things. Right, time independent Schrodinger equation. And second, uh, more comments on uh, eigenvalues uh, procedure. So if we come, if through our life we need to solve these equations in, in practice, the equation that has multiple solutions, blah, blah, blah. The, there is an interesting observation that may look strange on the first glance, but it was, uh, it is a standard thing to those who are already immersed in this uh, physical chemistry subject. So this formulations, these equations that uh, we discussed in class can be implemented and can be applied to describe realistic objects in uh, two forms, two types of incarnations. So one in form of uh, functions and uh, differential operators like derivatives. And another, so to say, incarnation of the of this philosophy can be equivalent to well done with matrices and uh, vectors. So functions are analogs of vectors, differential operators are analogs of uh, matrices. I'm I would be not surprised if you like show unhappy face and tell no, I it's something I do not like. It's uh, but. Uh, as we pass through the course, uh, this idea will, will come naturally. And right now we are preparing, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to defend the statement, but uh, create a little additional foundations so that when it will be time to do it practically, we, uh, our mathematical muscles or mathematical muscles of the software will be ready to, to be used. So uh, there are, couple of subjects that uh, I will try to go over and I invite you to, so I will be mumbling something, trying something on MATLAB, showing it on a screen and invite everyone to try to repeat. And then I will be doing circles, uh, visits to everyone and check if, if things are going well. And uh, no matter what, we will depart in time. I really want we, we finish earlier, but I, I doubt it's uh, realistic. Okay. So uh, vectors, matrices, and operations with them, right? I don't know what, what else to say. Um, let me probably just jump into, into this stuff. Uh, it, did everyone connect it to MATLAB? Oh, thank you, thank you. you uh, uh, no complaints with uh, equipment, everything works. Thank you. Okay, so something we already tried uh, last time. So we can, if you use this rectangular brackets, we just set up an array of data, right? And if we put, just give the name of this uh, variable, it repeats what are its value. If I have forgotten which variables I have uh, actively defined, I can type who, and it will show those variables I, I was playing in recent seconds and maybe a little before. If I want to queue them all, type clear, and type who, and there, there are no more uh, variables. So nothing comes, comes up. So uh, a little apostrophe sign means transpose and it uh, converts row into column. And if uh, I apply it once again, it converts 
colon and duro, right? So it's, it compensates uh, compensates uh, itself. Okay, so if I set up another vector, then I can maybe add them together and it works. But if I try to add together uh, transposed, it changes dimensionality, so I, I, I wouldn't do it. So um, C and X. Um, when we did with regular numbers, we were able to like add, subtract, divide, multiply, right? So uh, what about multiplication of vectors? Uh, how many multiplications of vectors uh, you have seen you can mention? Any any hints, and maybe I'm not uh, explaining, posing the question well, but I'm, I'm I'm confident that everyone or at least a half of uh, of who is in the class can answer this question. So, how do you multiply vectors? Huh? Row by column. And what do you get as a result of this multiplication? So we're probably not getting flowers or tables. It's objects of the same nature, right? Do we, if you multiply row by column to vectors, do we get another vector? And we get another vector. We do not get another vector. I'm not sure what we are getting. Another vector. Uh -uh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so multiplying row by colon, we are getting a number. If it is vectors, right? Let's do it uh, just a little exercise on the on the blackboard. And you do not need to do anything. I'll, I'll just uh, demonstrate and no, different direction. Yes, it, it was a little trap. So if uh, I set maybe X equals A, B, C equals C, D, and I want to multiply row by column. So X times C. A, B. C, D, so row by column, right? Now, uh, what I'm, I'm getting A times C plus B times D, right? But here we used to have two components. It's vector, it's like a, a vector on a, a plane showing two components, X and Y. Here, there is only one component. So it's not a vector anymore, it is number. So one component. Here, there were two components. And here is one. So by before, and what, what's the name of this uh, procedure, row by column, that gives, uh, that reduces dimensionality, changes it from vector to a number. I'm confident you know it. Yes, exactly. So this is, you see a little dot here, dot product or scalar product, right? So uh, from 
two-dimensional objects or we can make bigger vectors, we get how to say zero-dimensional objects. So you have just a scalar, a number, scalar product or dot product. So I am repeating my questions. How many types of uh, vector multiplications you remember? It's it, okay. Yes, yes, you recognize it. So uh, we will play it maybe at the lecture 35 when we will do this rotational motion. But uh, if we have, uh, uh, let me change it A, B, C here, and maybe X, Y, Z. If, if you have um, three dimensional vectors, uh, one can do like X cross C will be A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And here will be just uh, basic vectors, I, J, K. Uh, and then uh, one needs to selecting this one and then take determinant of, of the stuff, right? So for it, it will be uh, a vector with the first component will be B times Z minus Y, uh, times C, B, Z minus Y, C, and then the, the similar protocol for the rest. Yeah, thank you, Nate. Okay. How many ways to multiply vectors do we know? One, two, three, or four? Oh, do we, oh, let me formulate a different way. Do we have another way to multiply vectors other than dot and cross. So uh, there, there is one more and we, we will need it in, in the course. So um, I'm going to erase and uh, do things over. Just to make life life easier. So right now, first, Lola helped and suggested to practice standard thing row by column. And to practice row by column, we select first vector to be row, as second be a column, right? Now, what I have a crazy mood and I want to swap their order. What if I do uh, C? times, it's some, some new form of, of product times X, where C is column and X is row. X, Y, A, B. Do I get punishment from your math teachers if I try to do so? Or we still can, does, does this writing violate uh, rules of row by column multiplication? It violates, it doesn't violate, I don't care. Violates, doesn't violate, does not, I don't care. Okay, yeah, so it does not violate. Um, we can still practice row by column, but our row here will be very short. It will be row consisting of, of one element and column here will be consisting of on, also one element. So. I do first row by first column, right? So X times A. Now I do uh, first row and second column. I'm doing X times B. Now I do second row times first column will be y times a, and then doing second by second will be y times b. So the previous operation uh, dot product was contracting the size of the object. And this, when we swap their order, it pumps up the dimensionality. So uh, if we have, 
So vectors are one dimensional thing, right? They have one string of elements. Matrices are two dimensional. They have two, two independent dimensions. Numbers are zero dimensional. So by dot product, we contract dimensionality. By this crazy product, we pump, we, we expand the dimensionality. So uh, there are different names, but one of the names for this one is dyadic product. So maybe there are more ways to multiply vectors, but I'm confident about three. So let's, let's practice at least two of them, dot and dyadic. For cross product, it's kind of too much attached to, to three uh, to three dimensional space. Well, this uh, dot and dyadic are work for any any amount of uh, components. Okay, so we decided to x to be a row, and then let me define c as. Uh, As a column. So if you do so x is row, c is column. If you do x times c, what should I get? One times three plus two times four. So I expect to have seven. Let's check me. No. Why? Oh, uh, three plus eight, eleven. Right. So one, once once again, uh, one two, three three four. So if I uh, one times three uh, plus four times uh, two times four will be eleven. Multiplying and getting a single number. Right. So uh, now. To the supplies, I'm doing C times X. So it will be three, four for first column and multiplied by two, six, and eight for the for the second one. So we, we are multiplying vectors, but we get different style of data. So this should be quite basic exercise, but let me walk through and make sure that you are enjoying this. Uh, attempt okay and if you yeah yeah i see excellent i didn't have to say my first yeah yeah sure sure that's fine yeah thank you yeah great thank you yeah thank you Thank you. Okay, so what have we done in this plan? We introduced rows, columns, uh, summation, multiplication, scalar, and, and, and dyadic, right? And everything can be done with complex vectors as well. Uh, it, it will be just nothing special. All, all rules are uh, processed the same way. Now, um, let me call this so that I save effort like matrix A. So we have uh, a matrix and what can I do to it? So what if I try to place an apostrophe to matrix? What would happen? It will just swap rows and columns, right? So right now it's three, six, uh, four, eight. If I transpose, I expect it to be three, four, six, eight. Yes, it works. Um, now, how I can multiply matrix and the vector without, uh, if I do not want to do 
crazy things and I want just to play uh, standard things, no, no, no design of new forms. If I want to play row by column, like uh, X is, uh, can I, what if I multiply matrix A? I should multiply it by column, right? And then um, multiplying um, matrix by a vector column, you get another column, right? So matrix doesn't multiply by a matrix from uh, from the front doesn't change the uh, orientation. So we, we do your uh, favorite row by column. And uh, it will be two components. It will be vector of the same orientation. Uh, what would happen if I have only row vector and I do not have multiplication uh, transpo transposing operation? Is it possible to multiply a row a matrix and a row vector? How would you do it? If I know that in, in regular life, you typically do not multiply vectors and matrices, but to match a row by column operation, what should I do with uh, row vector and matrix? How do I multiply them? Is it a clear question? Is it unclear or bad formulated question or I do not care? Not clear question, clear question. Don't care? <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. So, in order to practice row by column, like uh, we need to column be at the second place, right? If you want to practice, if you have row vector and you want to be row by column, row should be on the first place. So uh, like if you have row vector by uh, matrix, then we can practice row by column once again and then data will be arranged in the same format of the of the of the row so it will be also two component row vector. That's, uh, I, I think it is trivial, but let's, let's try practice it so that we just uh, have a little exercise. So if I multiply, um, dimensions that do not match, it uh, doesn't cooperate with me. If I do row by column, it just performs operation and, and gives some, some number. Um, so B was matrix and C uh, was a column. So uh, matrix by column of the same number of uh, components works well. And uh, I, can alternatively multiply row vector by matrix. So the X was a row vector, B is a matrix. And if I multiply, multiply them, it reproduces also same style of data, the row matrix. 
Okay, uh, I have no doubt that no one will face challenges in this, but I'll better make a little visit, checking that we all are feeling happy. Okay, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you're multitasking. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. So we are um, we are done with uh, matrices transposing and uh, matrix by, by a vector, right? Now, um, what is a determinant, and why do we why do we need it? Do we have any memories from yours and mine uh, undergraduate studies in linear algebra? Does the word determinant looks uh, familiar, completely unfamiliar, or something that I remember but do not remember what? Okay. Uh, so, what is determinant? Huh? So, tell what it is. I, I know how to find it, but I have difficulties explaining why we need it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh, to invert matrix. Okay, and to solve a linear algebraic equation with multiple components. Okay, and determinant, the, the name sounds that we are determining something. Is, it, is there something like determinant zero or non-zero? Does it have any value? Does it tell us something? Okay, so uh, based on determinant, one can decide whether it is uh, beneficial to pursue this matrix further. So before doing any other operations, one can check whether it is good or bad matrix. Okay, and uh, how do we uh, find it? If we agree that one can characterize matrices with determinant and there are some benefits of using it. So like if you have this two by two so what what's the procedure of finding so determinant is it yeah is it uh, one number vector or matrix? A number. So, and uh, why it was showing same as a character of one anecdote. Um, an artistic painter decided to be to learn and to be a uh, surgeon, and he makes an operation, makes operation, and, ah, unsuccessful again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the black humor. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, which means we have uh, alpha delta minus beta gamma. And uh, if it is more than two by two, it is a similar procedure, same as we did for uh, cross product, and then it expands. It's just like 
minor algebraic uh, complements. But right, right now, th this is fine. This is sufficient. So uh, if numbers here are one, two, three, four, then determinant should be uh, four minus five my, uh, equals minus one, right? Four, no, minus six, minus two. Any more errors on my side? Okay, thank you. Let's, let's just make this little uh, exercise. So determinant B minus two. So we are on the same page between us and developers of MATLAB. They have the same definitions. Let me, I, I know it is uh, infinitesimal step, but let me wake up. Like make a little tour. And uh, in which circumstances you are getting determinant equal, equal zero? Do you remember any like theorems or rule of thumb? Yeah, thank you. And um, what if I uh, put like one, two, and then uh, two, four. So the second row is just first row uh, multiplied by, by two. So if the rows or columns in the matrix are not independent, if they're composed of the same vectors. So let's try one times four minus two times two. So uh, it tells that if we de decompose matrix as independent rows, they are not independent vectors. They can be built out of each uh, other just by multiplying by a constant. And uh, it means uh, it's kind of trivial matrix that doesn't need all this mathematical apparatus. Okay. So we done with determinant. Now, what is a linear algebraic equation? It's also a little uh, travel backwards in, in our memories. Like, uh, have you ever solved linear algebraic multidimensional equations? Everyone? Someone, someone didn't? Over? Oh, okay. Then I don't know what, what I'm doing here. <laughs> So uh, if we do have the Oh, thank you. Um, I don't think it is so important and anyone would, would watch this trivial things, but just, just in case. Uh, so if we have unknown uh, vector where X and like here are some numbers, uh, those are unknown numbers and here is something, something known, amount of letters A, B. So what, something like one, two, three, four. Here we keep X, Y, and here we will tell like maybe five, six. So how many answers, 
how, how does the answer to this problem should look like? So it should be some values of uh, a value of X and a value of Y, which would satisfy this equation, right? And uh, it is a matrix uh, writing of the equation like uh, one X plus two Y's equal five, three X plus four Y's equal six. And then one tries to uh, solve this equation. If it is very small things, one can just add, subtract rows and uh, solve it quite quickly. But if it gets to like 10, 100 million uh, matrix uh, by million uh, elements, then one needs some uh, computational tools, right? So if you call this like a matrix, this as unknown vector and this like a known vector, let's call it C, I don't know why. Our task is to find X, right? And uh, A times X equals C. And then it is one of you were prompting me to about inverted matrices, right? So if we assume that there is such inverted matrix, which by multiplying by our original matrix will, will give one or identity matrix, then uh, uh, multiplying this equation from the left, we will develop a solution of this linear equation. So if you know inverted matrix, then uh, we will we can solve uh, linear algebraic equation. So let's try to, to practice it. So um, what if you type in for an inversion? So we, we did something and we can, can uh, maybe assign it into the letter, some letter, I'm, I'm out of letters, like R equals inverted B. And now let's check if the main um, trick, main tool is uh, working. If we take this uh, inverted matrix and multiply it by non-inverted matrix, what should I get? One in a sense of a matrix. So it should be such matrix that has ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere. And by multiplying such matrix on any vector, it doesn't affect it. So any vector will be reproduced by multiplication of such matrix. Okay. And uh, let me walk around and uh, then maybe we'll solve some linear equation just for, for, for a test. So what is the type? Copy those. So the command is INV for in, in inversion. If I want to, to what? Just type R once again. I don't want R to be equal to this because now I'm using stop and lower case. I make up my case equal to this. So I don't want that anymore. I want to make my case. But now I want to cancel. I don't want uh, R you to want equal to, to this anymore. You want to uh, clear R? Yes, up my case. 
you can just assign it something different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no problem. Okay, thank you. Now let's uh, try to um, no C is a vector. Let's uh, call it different metrics, like maybe letter R or any letter of your choice equals to this in inverted A. And now type uh, R times A. So you see on the main diagonal is R ones and all the diagonal R zeros. Okay. I really do not like um, solving equations because to prove that it is correct, I need to solve them on the blackboard. And there is always chance to make an error that I do not want to make on camera. <laughs> so, uh, which, maybe you will just, uh, Okay, let's try to do it by by hand and then uh, then correct if if needed. So from here, x will be five minus two y, and if I plug this x into here, so three times five minus two y plus four y equals six. So 15, uh, six y's plus four y's equals six. And then we have 15 minus two y's equals six. And then we have nine, equals two y's, y equals four and five. And then we can uh, plug, it, plug it back here and get that uh, x will be five minus nine equals minus four. So the answer should be minus four and 4.5. Did you catch any errors? Uh, I, I do errors even if I do not want to do them. So uh, maybe anyone who catches error gets an extra credit and it will be counted towards final, final grade. <laughs> so if I take the matrix, which we call it here B, one, two, three, four, and if I call uh, C equals five and six, then R was inverted B and then now if I multiply inverted matrix times our free term, freestanding term times C, I should get the solution. Yes? Whew. I had a big fear. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me walk around and make sure there is no challenge. I, I'm just making sure that you uh, type the, you formulate typing of this question in the correct way and things go constructively. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. 
so by now we have uh, completed no we need to go different way so we have uh, completed inverted matrices and linear algebraic equation right? now um, eigenvalues I started to have here uh, about half an hour bef before our meeting. And just in case I will be not uh, sharp during the meeting, I, I made a couple of lines of preparation. So let's maybe take a matrix. Uh, I just selected it so that it will be a little easier for me. So um, the question is to find Eigen values and maybe eigen vectors as well. Does uh, does this question of finding eigen values for of metrics ring some bells? Yes. No, not everyone. Okay, then I'll do a little little introduction. So uh, suppose we have an arbitrary matrix. And we will do the same thing as uh, it was announced today in the class. So by acting of by matrix on some uh, vector or unknown can be called X, you know, no, C is a, is a good number. We will get a number and then a, the same vector again. So this one is matrix, this is vector, this is vector. So find such vectors and such uh, this letter E, which would please certain metrics. And for each metrics, uh, uh, there is a chance to find more than one solution. So uh, if the matrix is form formulated this way, how, how do we solve this equation? Uh, one can assume that anywhere we always have the matrix one that uh, we just introduced or if we found by uh, playing with inverted matrices right so if you plug it into any place of the equation nothing is changing and now we have a matrix a matrix a vector so we can call it like uh, unknown x y here is a number here is one zero zero one x and y so now we, we definitely have objects of the same nature on, on the left and right now can we subtract uh, one left from the right we, we can right then uh, how do we subtract matrices from element with the same index, like from element one one, we subtract element one one. And here, this little letter E can be placed from here to there, right? And if I multiply it by zero, it, it will be zero anyway. So I, I subtract, so alpha minus E, beta minus zero, gamma minus zero, delta minus E multiply by unknown uh, vector equals zero right so um we need as a, as a basic as a first step find uh, such so alpha beta gamma delta are are known so the the, the known numbers and e capital is unknown so our, our first task is to find such numbers e one or several that would make this equation correct and uh, the there, there are like rules there are the theorems that 
I either not remember or do not want uh, to bring in right now or both, uh, <laughs> that in order to find this letter E, one needs to do the, the following operation. One needs to take the matrix only and practice the determinant that, that we recently, recently did. So, uh, and make sure that it is equal to zero. So if this uh, equation is solved, the letters E, which are the only unknown here, will match the original equation. And then if needed, there, there are additional procedures to find eigenvectors. So how do we solve this equation? Yeah, <laughs> as a former artistic painter who became a surgeon. So uh, alpha minus E, times delta minus E minus beta times gamma equals zero. So it's like alpha times delta minus E of uh, delta plus alpha plus E squared minus beta gamma equals zero. So do you know how to solve this equation if E is only a known thing. How do you call this equation? Yeah, quadratic equation. And there, there, there is a formula to solve it, right? Okay. And then uh, how many solutions uh, quadratic equation has? Two, right? So if you solve this uh, quadratic equation and plug it into there, we should get a uh, correct answer. And Finding eigenvectors is, is, is possible, but let's forget for at least a few minutes about it or for <laughs> or longer. Let's just focus on uh, find, finding eigenvalues and then making sure that MATLAB can find it instead of us. And uh, so um, for this example of metrics, it took something a little simpler because last year, I think I did errors in front of the class. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is a little simpler. And uh, by some reason, instead of letter E, I used the letter lambda, but it, it doesn't matter, right? So minus unknown uh, eigenvalue, minus unknown eigenvalue, and then I practice the same uh, cross. And uh, so two minus two minus lambda, two minus lambda, the, the product minus one equals zero. So here we have uh, like A minus B times A plus B will be uh, A squared minus B, right? Here minus one. So lambda squared minus five equals zero, lambda, lambda squared equals five. So it will be plus minus square root of five, which will be plus minus 2.3. Uh, I intentionally selected the diagonal elements uh, of the opposite sign to make it a little easier for this example. So let's check if we can get this uh, square root plus minus square root of five out of any MATLAB procedures. So if I call, it's not a true Hamiltonian for any problem. I just select letter H by now. Minus two, one, enter, one, plus two, close the bracket. Now, um, do we have variables V? No, do we have variable V? No. Okay, so I am setting the, the following U V equals eig of H. So uh, eig is shortening of the German eigen, right? As we did in the class. And here, here uh, is the answer. So the answer of this procedure will be in matter of language, will be two matrices. First matrix will contain eigenvectors, and second matrix uh, V will contain 
eigenvalues. And they will be placed uh, on the uh, diagonal of, of a matrix. R right now, we do not need uh, too many details, other our brain will boil. But um, there is a procedure of, I apologize for, for making additional comments, we do not need them. You can close your ears for, 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 for 30 seconds. If we do know eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we can perform linear transformation, a rotation from one system of coordinates to another one. In two-dimensional real space, it will be just a rotation. In multi-dimensional space, it will be just a matrix operation. And if one makes, uh, if one rotates system of coordinates in multi-dimensional space uh, by a certain matrix, which is unique for, for each diagonalized matrix, then in the new system of coordinates, any matrix is converted into diagonal form where its eigenvalues will be on the main diagonal and everywhere else will be zero. So therefore, problem of finding eigenvalues is often called diagonalization. Okay, now you can open your ears. Uh, <laughs> I, I will tell something more practical and, and valuable for us. So uh, let's check this you, you, we see that it is plus and minus and let's check if um, if uh, this number 22361 squared quite close to five so sqrt of five is about this number so by uh, let me this arrow up repeat this problem by practicing the syntaxes of MATLAB that stands for diagonalization, we are getting this plus minus uh, square root of five, which seems uh, eigenvalues or eigenvalues of this matrix. I'm going to make a visit to everyone. And uh, uh, if you need a quick help on any syntaxes of the MATLAB operations, you can type uh, help and then the command that uh, you need assistance with. And it will overwhelm you with such amount of information that is uh, really challenging to, to read. So it's, uh, I, I'm trying to avoid reading this help pages, but uh, if you're really curious and if you want to become top professionals, you can read them and uh, exceed anything uh, ever, ever needed. So it's multi. Uh, it's multi line uh, manual and it tells uh, additional details uh for finding this eigenvalues and eigenvalues in some special circumstances before i will make a circle and visit everyone um just a little backward introduction a substantial amount of uh, engineering science and math problems can be reduced to finding eigenvalues of matrices. So it's uh, one of the um, most typical problem to be solved by computers. And uh, the algorithms to solve this diagonalization problem efficiently were on a focus uh, since creation of computers. The literal application of, of such procedures uh, are, done only in basic cases. In uh, practical cases, there are like uh, several generations of applied mathematicians who were trying to um, prove theorems and find algorithms how to find eigenvalues, maybe not ideally, but with high precision with simplified algorithms. And uh, I never decided it to be part of my life or profession, but it is like a, a world in the world. So one can 
deal with diagonalizing matrices for the whole uh, life and uh, there will be a community of people who would appreciate it just a, a little introduction okay uh -huh. yeah thank you Yeah, thank you. Why did you try to square this by the other one? Why were you trying to check where you said the square of this is by? Uh, okay, I, I, I will address your question to, to everyone. Yeah, thank you. So there was a question, uh, why were I trying to uh, find square of this number? It is not some universal thing that I need to, anytime I, I find eigenvalue, I try to square it, no. It's only this uh, specific example. So here uh, for the simple matrix, by solving this problem analytically, I did found that lambda is equal square root of five. So it is absolutely correct answer. And then I do have a suspicion, I, uh, or I pretend that I have a suspicion in front of you that MATLAB may give me wrong answer. So after it gave answer, I want to compare it with what, what was found. So I compare this uh, number that came out from MATLAB procedure with square root of five. Or alternatively, uh, if I have forgotten what is the syntax of the square root uh, command, I can just take the answer squared and check if it returns to the five. Make sense? Okay, yeah, thank you. So we are different, different, different. So we are done with uh, eigenvalues. Uh, I really hear eigenvectors. If like someone puts a gun to my forehead, I will solve for them, but uh, it's not a pleasure. <laughs> so uh, if we want to be brief, I'll just show the procedure and I will try to avoid a shame of doing errors in public. <laughs> uh, so if we do know uh, the values of E, so uh, if I was if I was doing it uh, analytically, But let me let me finish it. Although it maybe it's, it's not really needed. So it's e squared minus minus e delta plus alpha plus alpha delta minus beta gamma equals zero. And by uh, rules of the quadratic equation, so e should be uh minus linear term delta minus alpha divide by two in front of the squared and then plus minus square root of determinant which will be uh linear squared minus four uh first and last right uh, delta plus alpha squared minus four times alpha delta minus beta gamma. And there will be two answers, E plus E minus, right? And if it is, uh, if it is two by two, if it will be three, there will be three answers. If it will be hundred, there will be hundred answers. Okay, now, Suppose we do know these answers, 
either as uh, mathematical radicals ex expressions or as, as, as numbers. So if we plug in the value, let's say E plus in here, then we do know the matrix, we do know this E plus, but we do not know the vector. And by uh, solving this linear equation, one can find values of X and Y, and one needs to have them plus. And if you plug in another eigenvalue minus, there will be another vector. So um, instead of practicing it uh, to solve it anew, um, I can try if you insist, but uh, let's better avoid it. <laughs> you don't give me hard time. I, I, I'll try not to give you hard time. Uh, but um, we can make MATLAB to find these vectors and then check if maybe plug them in and check if they will satisfy this equation. So uh, constructive question and, and uh, would be how to extract eigenvectors out of this record. So there is a thing that I forget all the time and I will either figure it in front of you or some of you will read the manual and we collectively find. So eigenvectors are stored here either as rows first and second or as columns. In some symmetric cases, they are the same, which makes it confusing. But one needs to extract uh, this linear objects out of the matrix and then plug them into original equation and make sure if they are true uh, eigenvectors. So let me try doing something on, on this uh, along these lines and then we'll compare, uh, try to be on the same page. So suppose I have the matrix U. I can do U column one. So let's show once again. So here is U. Now I do U then column comma one. So it looks like it parses first column out of this matrix, right? What if I do U column two, it looks like it parses a uh, second column out of this matrix. Now let's check, uh, let's assume that this will be our X plus or let's X one. And this will be our X2. Now um, let's multiply each time uh, X1. And we need to X time uh, one minus X1 multiplied by the uh, eigenvalue minus square root of five, 2.2361. So if I understand things correctly, if MATLAB does things correctly, then it should give a vector of zero and zero. If I did some error, if it will be non-zero, it, it will indicate that either I'm wrong or MATLAB is wrong. And then I will try to swap rows and columns. So 10 to the minus four times some numbers, it looks like very close to zero. So uh, I did extracted the eigenvectors of the, from the, uh, this matrix U, plug them into original uh, equation for eigenvalue and found that they give answer close to uh, zero. So if two, subtraction of two terms of two things comes close to zero, it means uh, they're equal. Let's check 
And now I plugged in the second eigenvalue and second vector, and it, it did give another small number. So it, it looks like things were correct. Um, why the answer is not ideal? Probably because actual square root of five is uh, not five significant figures, but much more. Maybe explore it. Yes, you see it shows 10 to the minus 15. So it's definitely correct. Whew. So uh, other questions, is it clear what I was doing? Everyone, so, someone is not clear or not, not, do not, not caring. Okay, so uh, there were some, some signatures that I need to give, give it more clear. So please try to do it. And for those who want say, we'll give a little additional explanation. So I'm erasing uh, all these little exercises. So uh, E plus, it's slightly different notations, but E plus e equals plus square root of five, 2.23. E minus equals minus square root of five, minus 2.23. Now, the matrix U, so I was writing U space V, angular brackets equals IG H. So matrix U was including the elements of x plus x uh, y y plus x minus y minus so i can interpret it as two eigenvectors so eigenvector c plus eigenvector c minus and in order to extract these two did i use no, I use the letter, letters x, x plus, x1, x2. I, I understand it could be confusing, x1, x2. So MATLAB already gave me a two by two matrix that contains these vectors. And I uh, first think that I extracted this x1 and x2 out of this matrix U. So uh, x1, I formulated it as, as U column means uh, running freely all values uh, along the along the column, comma one that I want, want the first column. And then after I practiced uh, practiced this, it, it gave me the answer. So it gave me this uh, minus point ninety seven point twenty two, right? And then I did the same for the second vector. Now, I want to assume that MATLAB doesn't lie to me and that it accepts same uh, views on linear algebra as as we all have here. So if this x one this this stuff that I extracted from from the matrix is correct is a solution of this equation then by plugging in this vector into this equation let me draw it a thick arrow I plug in uh, this 
vector into this equation, I should give matching. So it should be, it shouldn't, uh, this plugging in this value of x1 shouldn't uh, violate correctness of this equation. And then I was literally doing, so h times x1, which is, which is here. And then I could do, our goal was to do, to check that e1 or e plus times x1 is a correct equation, right? In order to check that it is correct equation, I subtract left and right, so with minus, and then I need to prove that as a result, I'm getting zeros. So this is what, what I was actually trying to type on the, on the matter. So matrix H times X1 minus eigenvalue times vector X1, right? No, no doubts, no questions on that. And then I want to make sure that the answer will be a uh, vector colon with zeros in both elements. When I hit enter, I get something close to zero, but not, not ideally zero. It shows like 10 to the minus four, which is close to zero, and then some, some numbers here. And uh, I had a little grain of, of, of a doubt. And then uh, from our analytical exercise, we knew that eigenvalue is not 2.2 something, but it's literally square root of uh, minus square root of five. So if under here, I put this one. So if instead of machine precision data, I put, uh, literal square root of five, I'm getting a vector like minus 0.4 and zero multiplied by 10 to the minus 15. And 10 to the minus 15 is pro probably the smallest number uh, the MATLAB can handle. So it, if you see 10 to the minus 15, it should be treated as zero. So it's uh, zero with a machine precision. And by seeing this, so this means this number is multiplied by this vector. And by seeing this, uh, I uh, was feeling joy and uh, believing that subtracting of these two things gave us something so close to zero that I can believe that both eigenvalue and eigenvectors were found correct. Is it better now? Yes, no. Still some doubts. Okay, so uh, if there will be more questions, just uh, send me an email or ask in private after we uh, dismiss the class so that uh, uh, I'm going to make a visit and make sure that you practice this exercise and uh, enjoyed it. And, and then we'll see if any analysis is left. Okay. Okay. Yep, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Uh huh. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we have, I don't know, it, it should be two should be the same, x2, x2, good. And here you had uh, the
weather. So this value is appropriate for vector x1. And uh, if you flip the sign, it will be appropriate for value x2. Huh? Without min minus, it will be uh, so this one is correct and this one is correct. Here it is inconsistency between eigenvalue and eigenvector. Uh -huh. Now it, it, uh -huh. Yeah, that's great. So uh, I kind of goofed up eigenvectors without deriving and solving, but we did uh, extraction of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and we proved that mm, numerical solution is consistent to, to, to itself. So it, it matches original equations that we need. And now uh, there are just a couple of uh, less intense and more pleasant things to visualize matrices. Typically, we do, if there are two by two or even 10 by 10, they can be printed as, as numbers. But if they are like 50 by 50, uh, normal humans cannot read and analyze it only maybe some congenial uh, champions. And uh, there is a same as we were plotting uh, functions, there is a way to plot two dimensional objects. So um, bar three of the vector B. So it just draws a couple of uh, steps and if you're doing it on, on your computer, it will be going to editing mode uh, instantaneously if I try to do it uh, on a remote computer, it may delay. Okay, but it's three dimensional. So uh, right now it is a matrix one, two, three, four. So element one, one is one, element one, two is two, element, uh, so this one is one, this one is two, element uh, two, one is three, element, to two is four, right? right? And if you have larger uh, dimensions, we still can analyze and get general features. So sometimes we do not need to have absolute precision in everything we do. We need only the leading figure in, in leading uh, characteristic. For example, um, if we, um, Put or this so if I will look at the uh, matrix R times B, which is uh, unit matrix, you see here it is. Ones on the uh, main diagonal, one, one, two, two, and zeros everywhere. And uh, this property, like whether the metric is diagonal or non diagonal, can be identified without looking at the numbers. Even if it's like uh, 100 by 100 metrics, human eyes can easily identify if the, if this multi store buildings are located only on the main street and everywhere else is, is nothing, right? So um, that's basically it. 
there are some more uh, commands or co commands that would work for um, metrics of bigger dimensionality that make continuous surfaces, but uh, and their names are uh, mesh, surf for surface, waterfall, uh, but probably we will get um, closer to them as we return back to the functions. So please try to um, visualize a couple of matrices and make sure that you can rotate and look on it from, from different angles. Can you rotate it? Uh -huh, excellent. Yeah, it just connects this uh, points by, by lens. And if it is like 100 by 100, it will make beautiful shapes. And, and here it is a little boring. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Okay, so I think uh, we are done with uh, everything which was planned for, for, for today. So we do have right to put a symbol of completion right here. So the whole program is done. Uh, I'll stay here and answer any, any questions if needed, but uh, uh, formal meeting is done and everyone is welcome to, to disconnect. Uh, yeah, there, there are no formal assignments based on it. It's just accumulation skills for the future. And uh, uh, please consider to complete your slides uh, and send by, by the midnight tomorrow. It's not that, well, I, I, of course, I will look through and provide feedback if something needs to, to be improved. But basically, the reason for me to ask it to send before so that uh, at the day of presentation, I will have all of them uploaded to central computer and we do not waste time on reading it from USB or downloading from uh, your online account. So it, we, we just present quickly and depart in peace. Okay, meeting is done. Uh, I'm going to stop and share recordings if, if they were successful. <laughs>